Welcome to chapel, everyone. First, we would like to thank Mr. Grace Advisory Group for serving us as greeters. And we would like to three students who will be leading our service today. Sorry, Moody and Sam Walsak will share their reflections on their own hero's journey. And Kyle Fuller will offer today's gift of music. We also want to thank members of the varsity baseball team and the third lacrosse team for offering our, meal, our mealtime blessings this past week. And now it is their turn to issue the chapel challenge. So who will these teams challenge to offer the blessings the, color, the following weeks? Captains of baseball, and lacrosse. Serve lacrosse. Who? Serve lacrosse. Okay, so we serve lacrosse. Do you guys accept the challenge? Yes. Okay, so let's give them a round of applause. We are happy to call your attention to this rosebud that is placed here in honor of the birth of Ms. Gehagen and Mr. Rocha's son, Nicholas Rocha Gehagen, who was born on May 7th. We are grateful to God for his safe arrival, and we welcome him to our Cardigan family. Please join me now in prayer for choir reflection. Gracious God, thank you for the birth of baby Nico and ask that you bless him, his parents, and his big sister's soul as they settle into their new, life, their new family life. We thank you too for bringing us all safely to this day, just three short weeks until graduation. We are grateful especially for the strength and courage of all this year's titled leaders and rowing leaders who have helped us make this school year a strong one. To those among us now, who are waiting to hear the results of next year's title leadership this evening. Please give them patience and peace. Give the rest of us empathy and compassion. We trust that everything will unfold according to your purpose. Please help us all help each other handle any news with courage, humility, and grace. Amen. Welcome to chapel, everybody. I invite you to get into your mindful body, sitting straight up as if you had a string attached to your head, pulling you right up to the ceiling so that your spine is elongated, your feet flat on the floor. Please take a nice deep breath. Perhaps you'd like to count to seven on the inhale, on the exhale to 11. Give your brains a little bit of oxygen. Be at peace, know that you're exactly where you need to be for the next 20 or 25 minutes. So today, this week, actually, we're going to focus on the next step of our long hero's journey together. Last week, we talked about revelation, the point in the journey where you learn something new or see something differently than you saw it before. But often when we have a revelation, when we make a leap into the next level of maturity, we realize that our old behavior or our old ideas just don't fit anymore. We find ourselves a little bit divided in a way. For example, when I realize that I really do need and I want to study in order to earn the grades that I would like to make, I may have to alter my behavior somewhat. I have to change my behavior with my friends and spend a little more time with my books. Ah, there's a little bit of a division there between old and new. Or if I realize that I've achieved some successes, but I did it with someone else's help, and I have sort of taken that for granted, and I haven't yet said thank you. I may realize that I need to say thank you, and I haven't yet. So I am divided a little bit until I come together. Something I need to do in order to feel complete. Now, as we grow and mature, one way to find fulfillment and success is through the process of atonement. Atonement, E-A-T-O-N-E-M-E-N-T, atonement. 
It marks the gateway that must be stepped through in order to become a better and more complete individual. So if you were to consider that silhouette, and for those of you who can't see it, remember that it's a face coming through a barrier. If you consider the silhouette that represents Revelation, where the face is halfway through, you can see that he's a bit divided. Half of you is still in the old way of thinking, or your old world, and half of you sees the new world opening up, a new way of being, a new beginning. But we can't stay divided forever. That's just a step in the process. We have to choose. Do we stay put and stay stuck with the old familiar world? It's tempting. There's a world that we know and are comfortable in. Or do we take a deep breath and step into the new and unfamiliar world in new ways of thinking, in new ways of being? If we choose the new way, then we have to find a way to reconcile, to bring together our dividedness. In order to evolve into a new and better person, we've got to be at one with ourselves. If you look closely at the word atonement, A-T-O-N-E, meant, you can see that this, it derives from at one meant. It's a process of becoming at one, of realigning yourself. A famous English poet, Lord Byron, said, and I quote, the beginning of atonement is the sense of its necessity. The sense of necessity, the sense of needing to feel together again is when you feel divided or as if there's some unfinished business or if you feel out of alignment in some way. Maybe you have a big decision to make. Maybe you need to apologize for something you did to someone that hurt them either, either recently or even a long time ago. Perhaps you need to thank someone for some things that you have taken for granted. I can't tell you what it is for you. Each of us has to figure it out for, for himself, for ourselves. But until we bring ourselves into alignment with our core values and our newly enlightened viewpoints, we cannot progress to the next level. It's a necessary step in our journey. So what might atonement look like for you? With just a couple of weeks left in our school year, what do you need to do? What do you need to say to atone, to become at one, to leave here with no unfinished business? Whether you're moving on or whether you're coming back next year, what do you need to do before you leave in May, or at the end of May, beginning of June, or coming, sorry, to, what do you need to do to leave the place better than you found it? What do you need to do to have yourself leave this place better than you were when you came? And certainly, what do you need to do to make the school better for those who come after you? So I'd like to ask you to take a moment of quiet reflection to think about that. You can realign yourself into your mindful positions. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. Always helps to think if you block out some of the sensory input. If not, you can just soften your gaze to a point on the floor in front of you and think about what does atonement look like for you personally? All right, that's a good start and we're gonna pick up this theme in the week to come. But in the case of our community, our collective hero's journey, the one we've been on from the beginning of the school year all the way to where we find ourselves now, the process of atonement, a collective atonement, is made up of each one of our individual efforts. Just like the dragon, when we slayed the dragon, it was made of scales that each one of us contributed. This new silhou silhouette here beside me symbolizes that something we together hold. That's a hand holding something, but we don't know what it is yet. But it's something new, it's something improved. We're still divided, just like these puzzle pieces are divided. 
We as a school still have work to do. We as individuals still have important work to do with just a couple of weeks left to do it. In order to come together and become the Cardigan community that we want to be and to leave our legacy for years to come, we each must do the important work of atonement. As I say, this week we're going to explore this theme more fully so that this will make a little bit more sense. But for now, be thinking, what, what, do you, what might you need to do to bring yourself back into alignment? Because if we all do that, then the whole Cardigan community realigns as well to become a better, more wonderful school for our having been part of it. So I'd like to introduce our first brother speaker. I'd like you to help me join, join me in welcoming Sawyer Moody, who is going to be speaking about his own hero's journey. Thank you, Dr. Perryman. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It has been good to reflect on my own hero's journey at Cardigan, and I am honored to share my story with you all today. My call to adventure rang out in the spring of my eighth grade year in my hometown of North Andover, Massachusetts. I had finished my applications to prep schools, most of which were schools which I would continued on to my ninth grade year the next year. But one of my applications was different from the others. This application was to a school where I would be able to repeat my eighth grade year, something I considered doing for multiple reasons, such as giving myself time to mature socially, develop athletically, and grow academically. The name of this school is Cardi Mountain School. My parents were ecstatic about the idea of my, me repeating my eighth grade year because they felt I needed a bit more time to mature. Also, since lacrosse is a special part of my life, they knew that an extra year would help me develop as a player and make the recruiting process very easy. So after careful consideration and many debates, the next thing I knew, my parents were driving me to Canaan, New Hampshire to start the new academic year at Cardigan. At first, the school seemed like a summer camp, and I wasn't sure what to expect in the coming weeks. I was relieved that the whole atmosphere overall was better than I thought it would be, and that everyone was extremely friendly. I was happy, and I felt I made the right choice coming to Cardigan. As I think about all this in the framework of the hero's journey, I think about the many friends and teachers, my brothers and my mentors, who have helped me through my experiences. My friends have provided the moral support and humor on a day-to-day -day basis to help me get through the day without missing my friends from home. My teachers have helped me to acquire knowledge and to gain admission to the best school possible for myself, being Phillips Academy Andover. And third, my coaches have also helped me become a leader on and off the field and to reach my full potential as a student athlete. Not everything has been perfect, as in the case with any hero's journey. I've had my share of trials and tribulations. I've been homesick on multiple occasions, and I will admit to having had thoughts from time to time about not wanting to be here. But I know deep down that this place has been a lifesaver for me. What I've realized, my revelation, has been that Cardigan has provided me with every key to unlock the next doors in my life, and I will always be grateful. So how does the idea of atonement fit in here? Well, a year ago, just feeling grateful might have been enough. But feeling grateful is only half the picture now. In order to be at one with my new, more mature self, I need to express my gratitude publicly and sincerely. And I need to give something back to this special place to show my appreciation. So I hope to leave behind a special legacy here. Although I have faced plenty of challenges and triumphs, I want to be remembered as someone who always gave his best effort with a smile. I hope that others will catch this positivity and carry it on after I leave the point. I also want to say that I hope everyone at Cardigan realizes how much I have grown since coming to Cardigan, and that I attribute the growth to the faculty, staff, and all my friends. Of course, my parents have always supported me too, but the growth I have experienced here on the point could not have happened anywhere else. Through playing my first nerve-wracking games with varsity teams to learning fascinating information from my favorite teacher, Mr. Hart, I've noticed a positive change in my behavior. I feel I am fully prepared to head on to my next school with the utmost confidence that Cardigan has instilled in me. I feel as if no challenge is too great because the help I have received from the teachers and the realization that hard work will get you places. This motto of hard work has echoed through my ears multiple times. I've heard it from my teachers and from my coaches throughout my lifetime. 
I am excited for my new opportunities and I will always owe it to Carnegie Mellon School for its role in forming and strengthening my character. Finally, for the next generation of Cardigan students, I would like to encourage you to take your time here. Try not to rush the process of graduating. It will arrive before you know it. Most importantly, be sure to realize the important people in your life and thank them for all that they do. Coming to Cardigan is an honor. We all have our ups and downs, but when you realize how supportive of a place this is, you will understand how well it prepares you for life and you will definitely notice a change in yourself. Thank you. guys, uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. Started on a day, not any day, but a day nonetheless. My hero's journey began when I left the comfort of home to go away to a place of confusion and a lot of schedules. Upon arriving on campus, 
I was stunned by the realization of what was happening. I was going to be alone, with no parents to watch me. No parents. I was ecstatic, to say the least. Going away from home and the constant watch of my parents, what could be better? Well, that feeling of excitement lasted a whole, all the way up to the time when my parents drove away. And I was alone, looking at a schedule, wondering where the heck Marion Field was and why everything had such weird names. Human, Funnel, Hafeneferef. Luckily for me, however, I was not alone. After looking at my map for longer than I would like to admit, my floor leader, Brian Kim, came and helped me to get to where I needed to go. Although Brian Kim was the first to help me at Cardigan, he certainly was not the last. Throughout my years at Cardigan, I have met many mentors and brothers. My first advisor or mentor was Mr. Nakade. The best way to describe Mr. Nakade is an easygoing, relaxed guy from Hawaii. The best way to describe me as a sixth grader is a small, annoying, little round ball of energy. Oftentimes, our personalities would conflict, but in the end, his mentorship and guidance helped me to relax and be more easygoing like him. I credit most of my growth at Cardigan to Mr. Nakade's relaxed mindset and credible amounts of patience, even though my current advisor, Dr. Perryman, likes to claim all of the credit. Not only did I have a great mentor to guide me, I also had the other students around me. In particular, I found Henry Cormier and Jack Kavanaugh to be the greatest things at school next to marble parties. Both of them were always nice to me and, show me what, and showed me what it meant to be a leader. When I would mess around and annoy, and annoy the other people in the community, they were patient with me and simply guided me back on track. Their positive attitudes and tireless patience helped me to be who I am today. I faced plenty of trials along the way. The hardest thing for me to adjust to when I came to Cardigan was the busy and fast schedules everyone followed. I can still remember how crazy my first week at school was. I was rushed from orientation to orientation and a lot of school meetings. And then the dawn climb where I and all the other students woke up super early to look at a sunrise. Every second of the day seemed to be booked with something to do, whether it was breakfast, classes, lunch, sports, dinner, study hall. It all seemed like there, it all seemed like there was a different dress code required for each ac activity. Since sixth grade, there have only been two things that I really wanted to get at Cardigan. Those were honor roll, and leadership. It was in my eighth grade year that I really tried hard to get both. I had always struggled with academics, including coming very close to academic probation when I failed my Latin class in seventh grade. But in eighth grade, I made a decision to try my hardest and in, and in the end was able to land my name on, effort, on the effort honor roll list, a goal that had been mine since I first learned about it. The, the other goal of mine was leadership. I had always wanted to be selected for leadership, but I thought at the time that if you weren't elected to, be a to a leader position, you wouldn't be able to lead. Because of this shallow understanding of leadership at Cardigan, I was crushed, crushed when the investiture ceremony was over and my name had not been called. The thing I had been working for since I, had, th since I got here was gone with no hope left. I did not understand what I had done wrong. This was my dragon battle. The disappointment from the ceremony was rooted so deeply in me that it took all my strength to move on and understand that leadership was not just a title and that it is rather an opportunity open to anyone, title or no title. Now looking back on things, I have had a revelation I see things now that I didn't see then. I regret how much energy I wasted on self-pity for not getting a title. I now realize that it is not the title that creates leadership, but the dedication and service to the community that creates it. Overall, a lot has happened to me here out on the point. And in my four years of being here, I have completely changed 
from a student that failed his Latin class to one that made both academic and effort honorable. I know my journey is not yet over. More challenges are likely to be encountered before the end. But as I work on creating my legacy, the days will continue to unfold. And soon, I will return to the top of Mount Cardigan to bring this journey full circle. As my Cardigan journey comes to an end, the experience and lessons I have learned will continue to resonate with me for the rest of my life. So, to conclude, as many have said before, enjoy your time here out on the point, and don't let a bit of disappointment get you down. Believe it or not, resilience can be sweeter than immediate success. And to my brothers, teachers, coaches, and especially to Mr. Nakade, ma'alo. That's Hawaiian for thank you. Thank you, Sam and Sawyer and Kyle, for sharing your gifts with us this afternoon. At this time, please rise and join in the singing of the Cardigan Hymn. Again, our favorite school by nature's gifts benign. We raise in song our thankfulness for beauty which is thine. For winter snow, for afterglow, when day fades into dreams of goals toward which we all will strive to keep thy faiths alive, to keep thy faith in us alive. Together we will strive as cardigan is mirrored in our crystal lake so clear. May we through life reflect thy truths and memories as dear. Of summer's green falls colors bright, of glimmering stars at night. God give us strength to carry on through storm or weather fair. The peace vouchsafed by living here for all the world to share. As you go out into this beautiful New Hampshire afternoon, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the warmth, enjoy each other's company, and I leave you with the threefold blessing from the book of Numbers in Hebrew, and Dr. Perryman will say it in English. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai panave lecha v'chuneka, Yisa Adonai panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>